Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Perea, and I'm part of the Remote Winbox team. Welcome to our What's New webinar for this month. Uh, let's get started here. Thank you all for showing, and uh, we'll monitor your questions as we move along. If you've got any additional questions, you can always let us know at the end. But first off, let's talk a little bit about Remote Winbox if it's new to you. So Remote Winbox is a MicroTik specific software suite. And we've got everything from historical stats to backup uh, management, firmware management, uh, bulk configuration, and of course, remote access. And there comes in a couple of flavors. So remote Winbox comes in a cloud version, which means that you're on a, uh, just sign up on the internet and pay as you grow. And then Admiral is our custom deployment and uh, dedicated to your company. And uh, that can be either in the cloud, uh, uh, bring your own hypervisor or as an appliance. Uh, we just talked about this. Um, one of the things that's uh, in progress is that we've seen a whole bunch of global growth. And so we're about to add a uh, European server and we may continue to expand across the globe as, as more users join the system and uh, expect to see the EU coming this month. Again, Admiral is our uh, dedicated instance for your deployment. Um, if you wanted to kind of get an idea of when an Admiral makes sense, uh, if you need to get um, dedicated security options so that you can host it behind your own firewall and have it be on premise. That's a good reason to get an Admiral. Uh, or if you have more than 200 MicroTix, then definitely Admiral is going to be financially advantageous to you uh, over our cloud. One of the other things that having an Admiral can do for you is unlock the ability to do customizations and software integrations. So if you have a desire to get something very specific done with MicroTik, go ahead and contact our team. We've got experts here in everything from MicroTik engineering to software dev, full stack developers, and we can help make a thing work that uh, you want to integrate with some MicroTiks. So let's jump into what's new this month. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that uh, we'll, we'll show here in just a moment in the dashboard, but first let's go ahead and talk through it. Uh, we've added a lot of work on tags. So in the past, tags have always been searchable, but now they're filterable. So for example, uh, you may have a deployment where you've got two or three tags to indicate that, hey, maybe this is tower equipment and it's in this location. Um, and it's got this other uh, identifier for a neighborhood. Um, in the past, sorting that might have been a little more difficult than it is today. Uh, we've got easy tag filtering and then the ability to add tags to your equipment very easily. So we're going to show that and we've made it much, much easier to add tags. Um, next up is a, a firmware channel selector. Uh, just a quick, easy uh, to use feature that allows you to jump into your firmware management. And if you wanted to, if you notice that one of your firmwares uh, for your MicroTik is not in the, the channel that you would like it to be in. So for example, uh, it's real common for you to say maybe all end user MicroTiks are uh, on long-term and all of my, or all, and, and then all of my access points are maybe unstable. Uh, for some reason, I've got, you know, some features that I need for those different firmware trains. So uh, it's been requested that we allow you to change that easily from our dashboard. And now you can do that. So you'll be able to see uh, an icon for those images. And if you click the icon, we'll be able to change that firmware channel uh, super easy. Um, another thing we've added is a firmware audit. So in the past, you would look at firmware and um, if you want to look at the history of the firmware that was available per router, and now there's an overall view. So you can say, hey, uh, what did my deployment look like um, on this particular date? What was uh, triggered for firmware updates? Uh, end user had an entire refresh done on it. So it's got a new look and feel to it. And um, We'll take a look at that shortly. So show you what that looks like. You can now run speed tests from there. 
uh, look at all of the devices attached, check out the Wi-Fi info, and uh, it's looking beautiful. Finally, we talked about this, we're expanding our cloud capacity globally. Uh, we've done plenty of work internally and tried to enhance our, our service. So we're continually adding more VPN concentrators to handle more routers. And we're about to expand that service into the EU as we talked about. So let's take a look here. Uh, if I jump into the dashboard, uh, let's first off take a look at the new tag feature. So if I head over to any of my listings here, you'll notice that the tags at the top here now has a new icon here for filtering. And so if I want to click filter, I can look for routers that have the core tag. I can switch that off and look for towers. And so these are uh, these tags can then be filtered. Like I mentioned, if I have uh, some routers that have uh, multiple tags, and I'm not sure that, that I've got a good example of this. Uh, let's see if remote. So here's one with remote and core. So if I were to pick remote and core, it'll show me just those routers. So on my lab here, I've only got about a dozen routers that are uh, connected. Uh, if you've got hundreds or thousands, this feature will be key in filtering and paring down the uh, the dashboard here so that, for example, if I wanted to do a firmware update on a specific location, only customer routers, um, that's going to be a lot easier to do with the tag filtering. Next up is, is adding and removing tags. So you can see here I've got remote core and tower. I can just click this and say update and add another tag. And it's that easy and quick. Uh, I can add tags, I can remove tags. So as I mentioned, uh, just a, a lot more usability on the tag functionality here. And then once tags are sorted, um, if I remove this core here, I can still use my search in conjunction with that so that uh, they can work together to, to absolutely drill down to the routers that you're looking for. Next up, let's take a look at that firmware that we mentioned. So under firmware, uh, this is going to allow me to select a maintenance window, schedule an update. I can either do some routers, all routers. Again, I could filter down here and then select all these routers, schedule an update. And now we can pick a maintenance window, 2 AM. Sure, let's go for it. And let's say that I also wanted to update those routers to a different uh, firmware channel than they're currently on. The way I would do that now is you'll see here, and, and this icon represents the stable channel. Let's say, oops, I see that this one is actually set on the, uh, I'm having a trouble clicking on this one. Oh, because it's offline. We can't change it when it's offline. Uh, so let's say that I, I wanted this to switch to long-term. Uh, I'm currently unstable. All I have to do is switch that over to long-term. See the icon changed. We talked to the router and updated that on the fly. Uh, so now if I want to, you can see there's a firmware update available. Um, and I can schedule that guy. He's going to update at 2 a.m. and have the uh, long-term patch applied to him. And that will cover both the system package and the uh, router board upgrade. So let's take a look next at our end user view and our updates over here. So right off the bat, uh, you can see we've got uh, the most recent speed test displayed at the top. Uh, we can run a new speed test from here. We've got 19 devices attached. Those show up down here at the bottom. And I can click on any device to get additional info on that guy's signal strength and bandwidth throughput. Um, I can do the stacked chart. So it'll take a look and show me all of the devices and what's their bandwidth been for <clears throat> the last day, week, or month. And then I can take a look and say, hey, who's the heavy user on the network? Um, hey, it's this guy, Evan PC 952 And that corresponds up here with this large bandwidth spike. 
Uh, I can always get more info, show the SSID and passphrase. And you'll notice that this is all read-only information. So there's nothing that a user could do to really interrupt or break their service here. Um, we would allow them to see their SSID and passphrase. We allow them to run a speed test and get good info about what's their network uh, throughput look like and which devices are doing that, but without any ability to, for example, get into Winbox where they could accidentally hit the wrong button and do some damage to their service. Um, if I had multiple routers assigned to me, I could jump in here and select from between which ones that I had assigned to me. Um, head back to firmware for a moment here. And uh, one of the other things that was added is the firmware audit button here at the top. So under firmware audit, uh, again, I can now see the whole history of my entire firmware audit for, for uh, all of my routers. So as an example, uh, in the past, if I wanted to see this audience's firmware updates, I can take a look here and see that one router's update history. But let's say you want to look at all firmware update history. Now that's really easy to do from the firmware audit and take a look and you can see who scheduled the update, when they scheduled the update, what it went from and to. And just have a better idea of you know, how the, the firmware performance of your network has been. Uh, let's see, I think we also had a quick update on alerting on DHCP pools being full. So that now uh, sends an email alert as well as a dashboard alert. So dashboard alerts have always gone uh, here to the alert section of the, the main Knockview dashboard. Uh, they'll now get emails if the DHCP pool is full and you've selected to opt in for that functionality. Let's take a look here and see if we've got any questions, but we've also, um, I think that covers most of what's new for the month. So just reviewing here, we've got all our tags, we've got our firmware, the alerting, full end user re redesign, and then yeah, our cloud capacity. So I think that covers all of that functionality. Mario, did we have any questions? Um, I don't see anything in chat except for Tyler saying end user view looks quote unquote dope now. So <laughs> that's good to hear. Um, let me take a look if we got any frequently asked questions that we compiled out of emails. Um, there was one that was, uh, talking about uh, the differences between cloud and Admiral, which you kind of talked about, and then about on-premise versus dedicated cloud. So could you elaborate a little bit on, on, on that part? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, some of our customers operate their own data center and they're happy with you know putting another thing in their data center. But some of our other customers have really migrated to the cloud or they're in progress of pushing everything to the cloud or they don't operate a data center they're they're kind of a decentralized network and they don't have a lot of equipment you know locally hosted and would prefer that we host that for them so uh, what we call dedicated cloud is where we take your admiral and we host it in our data center in atlanta georgia in our and uh that allows you to have a, a full admiral instance that is still in the cloud from your perspective, but it's dedicated for your deployment versus the on-premise option, which could be on your hypervisor or we can ship you the one you appliance. And one of the things to note is that uh, if you decide you wanna bring your own hypervisor, uh, we do today spin up about eight virtual machines. Uh, so it's a whole bunch of Ubuntu, uh, Linux instances, as well as a Mikrotik CHR that drives this dashboard and makes all this magic happen. Thank you. Um, I think that is all that we have for questions. Um, nothing else in chat except for uh, Tyler Casey mentioning that he's waiting for the Capsman fix on the end user view uh, to roll that out to his subscribers. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll address Tyler here real quick that uh, we discovered yesterday that there was a, uh, 
actually a couple of bugs specifically related to caps man and uh some of them were, were patched already and some of those uh, remain to be patched so we, we're pretty sure we've got the understanding of what the the corner cases are and it has to do with uh master and slave interfaces existing on on caps man so if you if you just use caps man and there's no slave configurations everything should be working but if there is a slave configuration we've got a bug with that scenario that we need to patch up hopefully today or tomorrow Uh, sounds great. Um, and looks like we have uh, a question from Alex. Hello, can I generate batch users for hotspot using remote Winbox? Uh, so today, remote Winbox does not incorporate any particular specialized features for hotspot. So as you can see here, um, we can jump in and take a look at routers, see what their health is, look at that end user view, run speed tests. Um, we do automated backups, uh, disaster recovery, managed firmware, bulk configuration pushes. Um, we can manage the, the logins to Winbox, and you can add more users to this dashboard. Um, however, nothing in particular that's specifically targeted at Hotspot. Now, if you, for example, had a, a script that you wanted to deploy to, let's say, a dozen or a hundred microticks, um, that's what the fleet commander tool would be used for. And so you could drop that script here in the command section, say, hey, I need to run this add hotspot something or other. And then you could select all of your hotspot routers and deploy that command in one step. Um, but as far as generating uh, hotspot info on the fly, that's not something the dashboard does today. Thank you, Mark. Um, it looks like that is it for questions, uh, unless something else comes up in the chat. Uh, um, would you maybe mention a couple of words about uh, Wispapalooza? Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, if anybody's headed to Wispapalooza, uh, please stop by our booth. I believe we're 535 and we'll be there all week. Uh, we'll have several members from the team there to answer questions, talk to you, uh, take your feature requests, and just have a good time there in Vegas. So if you're headed to Wispapalooza, come see us. Well, guys, uh, barring no more questions, thank you for giving us the time to join us today. If you'd like to learn more, head to remotewinbox.com. You can always check out our videos. We actually did have a uh, quick one minute video uh, last week that does a quick overview of the platform as well uh, as there's tons of other content out there, both funny dog video commercials and uh, tutorial videos that are out there. So thanks for joining us and have a great day.